Hey guys, welcome to Netlink Daily CES 2014 edition. What? We're in a fancy hotel. Yep, that's right. We're here in Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show 2014. We'll be filming Netlink from different places all over the strip as we meet different vendors and check out all the cool stuff that's going on in tech this week. We've had a few technical difficulties so far getting internet working in our hotel, and Wheels is about three phone calls away from jumping off a balcony. But we're making do with what we got. Obviously CES is a massive show and we won't be able to cover everything, but we are going to get as much coverage as we can. Right after this, we're gonna take a look at some awesome stuff from MSI, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, the news, which is all going to be CES stuff, I guess. Valve has announced the lineup of companies making their own Steam machines, and just like Lord Gaiman promised, it looks like there's options for all different power and price points, from the $2,600 model from Digital Storm to iBuyPower's $499 machine, to Gigabyte's Bricks model, which will hopefully be less than that. Of course, you can just build your own and download SteamOS for free, so there's that. AMD has come up with an answer to NVIDIA's variable refresh rate technology, G-Sync. It's called, tentatively, FreeSync, because you may not have to buy any extra hardware for it to work, unlike G-Sync, which requires a special module. Some laptop displays already support GPU-dependent frame refreshes as a power-saving feature, and AMD's software takes advantage of this existing tech to more or less replicate NVIDIA's results. It's not a final product, but it would definitely be cool to get variable refresh rates without buying extra hardware. In the meantime, however, NVIDIA has just released the Tegra K1, a mobile processor based on Kepler architecture, the same as their current-gen desktop GPUs with 192 CUDA cores. The chip will be able to output 4K video and even run Unreal Engine 4. It will also have a 32-bit and a 64-bit version and will apparently be featured in mobile devices later this year. All right, that's it for Nelling Daily, guys. We're off to film all the things. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more CES 2014 coverage as well as other tech news reviews and tutorials. Let's go! Stop. <laughs>